The recent ban on the domestic sale and processing of ivory and its products by China took effect on Sunday, the 31st of December 2017, fulfilling a commitment by the government made in early 2017. The UK is also said to be on the verge of instituting a ban of its own on ivory. Back home, experts have commended the ban, which in effect closes one of the world's largest ivory markets. They view this as a way to control elephant poaching. China itself, they know everything about conservation. Look at what they did to the panda. Now, would you convince Chinese people to sell parts of the panda to Kenya? That will never happen. That's what we're asking them to do with our wildlife too. Now, the other thing... Tourists, I doubt, come to this country because of our great food or just about the topography. I think our tourism is wildlife based or nature based and that is why uh, ensuring conservation and promoting it is very critical to our socio-economic development and vision 2030. But will this ban alone end the poaching of elephants? We expect that the improvements are going to take time to come. The fact that it is banned in China or in Britain doesn't necessarily make it uh, have an immediate impact on Kenya. But in terms of a global movement uh, towards ensuring the safety of wildlife, I think we stand a lot to benefit as a country. And as you may know, China's ban has a loophole, a massive one. This ban only applies to the China mainland. It does not apply to Hong Kong, which is the number one destination of ivory in the first place. The Chinese and American bans, as well as the expected UK ban, have a positive impact on the image of the country and are bound to energize efforts to address the plight of the Jumbos, even though the real benefits may not be immediate. A 2014 report of the Task Force on Wildlife Security identified poor enforcement and implementation of Kenya's globally acclaimed anti-poaching legislation as a challenge to reducing poaching. Now, the greatest challenge is just implement 90% of the laws in our books and we will be a stellar com uh, country. Kenya has done an amazing job in cracking down on low-level trafficking. A very poor job at cracking down on high-level trafficking. Commitment may not be adequately demonstrated, particularly when we don't seem to be very clear about our development priorities. We've seen considerable conflicts, uh, particularly where development concerns uh, conflict with uh, conservation concerns. And this is cannot be demonstrated better by the fact of uh, serious questions that have been raised about environmental impact assessment, particularly when dealing with our major development projects uh, captured as Vision 2030 flagship projects. The standard gauge railway, of course, is... Supply of the ivory has long since been driven by the demand of it, particularly in China, believed to be the world's largest domestic market of ivory. In Chinese society, the art of ivory carving has been practiced for ages. Ironically, Chinese elephants went extinct over 3,000 years ago, with ivory carving taking the largest blame for the extinction. The experts believe that Kenya still has a long way to go before her elephants are truly safe, even though Environment CS Judy Wahungu recently announced a small upsurge in elephant numbers in selected ecosystems. Our population is increasing steadily by about 2.5-2.6% per year. And even as we worry about uh, conservation of wildlife and poaching, we are realizing that wildlife is threatened mainly by destruction of habitat, which means that uh, we need to get the right balance between our other socio-economic development pursuits and our conservation objectives. So there is a real challenge. The saddest thing is an elephant in Kenya is protected with the minimum penalty of life imprisonment and 20 million shillings crossing to Tanzania. That's not the case. So we're the disparity in laws is a serious problem when it comes to enforcement. Then For example, if both of us are pushed in the Mara and you run and cross it to Tanzania and I remain in the Mara, oh, we'll be subject to two very different laws and two different penalties. By closing its ivory markets, China is showing its commitment to end its role in the poaching epidemic plaguing Africa's elephants. The enforcement of the ban offers conservationists a reason for cautious hopefulness. By extension, the number of Jumbos in Kenya is likely to continue to rise steadily. Victor Moyakane, Channel 1.